I work with Tenderloin Housing Clinic. Wendell is the supportive housing manager for the Winton Hotel. Is this going to be 85% market rate? No, this is 100%. Do you hear that? 100%. Yeah. All right, keep going. We, are not, we did not have to develop the property, I will say, from scratch. The owner of the building prior to us moving in did any upgrades needed to the building, and it wasn't developed from scratch. They just took the building and made it, did a lot of improvements in the building to make it look really nice. Uh, and we, as an organization, didn't have to um, take care of any of those costs. But it is, um, aside from the people that were already in the building, because obviously we, we didn't displace anybody, aside from any of the current residents, everybody new entering the building, it's 100% affordable housing. 45 of the units are for veterans through a uh, project-based um, VASH program, and the remaining units are for chronically homeless individuals. And we do have, just in terms of services, I think there were some questions that came up. Uh, so we do have support services on site. We have 24-hour uh, staffing desk clerks that are there to support the residents and an on-site resident manager. Uh, the case managers that we have on site are there to support the residents in the building in any way that they need. And then we are also working really closely with the Veterans Administration uh, to provide support for the veterans that are in the building. All, all of our referrals for the, the veterans housing, um, again, project-based uh, VASH, so come through the, everybody's placed through the housing authority in that program. Yes. What is VASH? Uh, veterans, what's it called? Veterans Affairs Supportive Housing. Thank you. Um, and this is specifically, again, because it's project-based, they have to come through the housing authority, but anybody that is a veteran that may be eligible can go to the veterans clinic downtown and find out whether or not they're eligible, and they would get them the voucher so that they could use that for housing. And then the uh, rent is then 30% of their income for all of them. So VASH is basically like a special section eight voucher for debts. Yes. Yeah, and there's two different types of VASH vouchers. There is one that acts very much just, just very much like a section eight voucher, and people can use that anywhere in San Francisco to find housing. This is specifically project based, so people can take their their choice voucher or they can get a project-based voucher that only allows them to live either in any project-based specific building. So there's multiple of those around the city. So this is project-based? Yeah. So then what, what determines if that gets uh, a general voucher or a project-based voucher? Choice. Choice? Yeah, they, they, they get to choose. I mean, they're, they're ultimately eligible for a choice voucher, but for a lot of people it's really difficult because it's, it's hard to find housing that for you know landlords that are willing to accept those vouchers or something that falls within the rent that's allowable. So they if they if they're having difficulty they can always come to a project based building or often project based buildings will also have support on site whereas private spaces will not. So who issues the one about the housing or some other San Francisco Housing Authority. So it's all HUD funded. Okay, so these are okay, so, so this is not for the veterans. It is well, through the veterans. I mean, they're referred, they're, they're originally right connected right. through the veterans. Yeah, but, but can't make it, is, it is what it is. Real. The money can't meet me. Okay, so it's not really a new program. So I can't meet me. It's actually, yeah. I think it's, it's a new program. It's created like they're well, out there. But I'm behind the cap. So the program itself has been around for a while. Well, but the HUD VASH program was created by, I think it's Michelle Brockabone and Michelle Brockabone. They became like the stewards of the hood match program. It's like five years running right now. Okay. And, um, and, and it's specifically every year, uh, according to our population, our homeless counts, I believe, um, within that program, there were allocated so many hood badges for, for vets, you know, vet vouchers. Yeah. And then so someone, let's say you're, you're working with them, they're out on the street, they want to get housing, get things moving. They go down to the VA center 
uh, downtown clinic on uh, 4th and Harrison, I believe, 3rd and Harrison. So, yeah. And um, they meet with a counselor, and then they get put into a pool, and in that pool, there's so many eligible HUD bash for that particular time frame. And then they get referred to uh, the uh, housing group here. But every year, we get so many uh, just for that. Very well said. Is there anything else that you want to say? So, so far, we're, I see about 50% into how many vets that, um, that we have so far. Okay. The last check that I had was 31, so we're. Yeah. So, we're, yeah. so, they, in order to speed up the process, they are offering no moving costs for the first month. So basically, you come in, um, we show you the unit. You, you, you know, you if you have a certain location you'd like to be, the back, the rear, the middle, you let us know. Or if you don't care, we then we'll show you some units. You say, okay, I like this unit. Then we put all the paperwork together, and basically, what we look back, what we get back from HUD is a half letter showing what your income is or what your rent's going to be. Okay. And once once that's done, um, then it's just it's setting you up for the appointment to move in. Okay. So, yeah. so you move in, and then the agreement is that on the next following month, you pay your rent. Okay. So, and the rent goes from zero to, to, to you know, up to $872. So that's, thank you. Because if you're getting Full hundred percent, your rent is going to be eight seventy two. Okay. Okay. So if you, you know, it all depends what your income is. So that's how that's what it's based on. So. Yeah. I, I think that you know for us because we're right across the street. Right. And we had some people in Winton paint for the for years, and um, even when we lost our original space uh, for a good year, um, people uh, that live residents in Winton. They stored our paint and brushes in their rooms. And when we would go paint, we would not want to go spend some time, have some coffee, and get our paint to come down and paint. And so um, it's, it, I think that you guys have a, 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 a focus, a focus on also having vet housing has also helped us out with uh, folks that are working with that are unhoused presently. That's um, just the mere fact of knowing that that housing is available right there. And it's just, you know, and it's just, a, you know, a doorstep away. Right. Yep. And um, so what I wanted to see was that is that how could we uh, uh, further, like, if there's any possibility of us to, like, further even, like, work with you guys, and, like, you know, as a partnership, or maybe we can come and if there's a community or something, we can sit off of what's available in Vets Alley, uh, what we're doing in the Vets Alley. Uh, because one of, one of our artists, uh, uh, RC, uh, is, is in your building, and, uh, and it's really interesting how, you know, working with him was, you know, we didn't have a set stop time, and he lived across the street from the vet, Vets Alley, it would take me, I had to go across town to get over there and paint, and so, you know, 10 o'clock at night, 7 o'clock in the morning, whenever he felt like it, you know, he felt like he could get up, get his paints, yeah. walk downstairs, go in the alley, and that was his space, and do it like calm and peaceful. Yeah. And so if we could, uh, if there's a chance that we could like offer that opportunity to even more vets that are there, mm -hmm. uh, we would welcome that. We would love that. We have, um, I wrote your information down so that I could get you connected with our support services team. We have weekly coffee hours, it would be great to have you come out to one of the coffee hours and talk to the people in the building and talk about the services and then further figure out how we could partner. I think that'd be great. <laughs> or even still, uh, I think for me, it's every quarter. Yeah, okay. We have a meeting every quarter with all the time, so that'd be a great time to come to me. It's a lot, you know, I think I just had my first one and I had a lot of large stress. Oh, cool. you know, so yeah. I'm going like, okay, so this, this, is, <laughs> this is going good. So I know we're still bringing people on yeah. and hopefully, I like a, you know what, I'll tell you what, um, we're going to do a barbecue oh, cool. in May, oh, okay, for yeah. I think May or June, we're going to do a barbecue, we'll and I'd like you to just come out, come out with us, 
and you know, and, and enjoy, and, and you can you can you know tell everybody what's going on, what's you know what what we're doing, and uh, what you're doing, and then uh, see how it goes. Okay, hey, let's the newsletter. I'm just gonna have to rub it in your face. Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> We've tried. That's another, that's we never have time. <laughs> you try it. Okay. We, we need to get it together. We do. It. Hold on. There's a question back here. I think his hand has been up for a while, and then I can. Um, one thing, I can, I can see the back side of the window out of my bedroom window. Oh. Well, I was watching rehab over there. Okay. <laughs> um, do the tenants moving in now, it sound like you need to the force out of these No, we are not. We, I mean, we can't allow them, that we can't make the people that previously had sat on the TV take it down, but we don't do that. Like, so we do have a table. I think everybody has. The building is equipped with very basic cable, so it's like 50 channels or something, I don't know what it is, but the, the basic, basic stuff, and everybody has access to that. Well, because before we had 14 television. So what I found out today is one of our tenants went to, uh, to at and and they just got internet. Because all the veterans that move in all get a free smart TV. What? Hey, smart TV. That, that was for the source yeah. of plowshares. Source of plowshares. Connected us with the donation wow. of TVs. Yeah. TV, TV refrigerators, okay. microwaves. We also have a kitchen, a six burner stove. Um, we got a laundry room. So, um, you have tenant, a room? the tenant came, he, he, he basically told me, he said, so what happened was, he said all he asked him to do was he paid 60 some boxes, so 60 some full box. Took a smart TV, plugged it into it, and gets like a hundred some channels now. Right. He said it's forty dollars a month. Okay, well, I, I was here because I had seen that uh, a whole bunch of them disappeared. My other question is, have you thought about putting a roof deck on the top of the building or construction? You know, they fall over. We haven't thought about it. Uh, it's been a long time since I've been up on that roof. It'd be awesome if we could do that. There is a new roof on the garden. Yes. So you have a brand new roof. I don't know the answer to that question, but if, if it is possible, I totally agree. Did you have a truck in the building? Uh, the owner.
what we needed to have in a building that we were going to provide for people that were homeless. I think the two of them working together really did a great job, but we didn't fund any of that, so we could not have done it without the owner of the building. You know, I did not bring a card. I don't know if you did. Uh, even if you, if we didn't, we're on Facebook and our website, Tenderloin T, Tenderloin, TenderloinHousingClinic.org. I guess it is. I have the information. Great. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Ah, didn't bring a card.